Hare Krishna, my, my uh, concept of outreach is all about, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has told us, Priti Viti Achi Ata Nagaradigra, that Krishna consciousness should be available in every town and village, but I believe it has changed tremendously. Krishna consciousness should be available, available in every home through what? The mobile phone, I believe. So I believe now Krishna consciousness, not just in every town and village, not in every home, but now it should be in every mobile phone because everyone's using their mobile phone all hours of the day. So how can we do that? And hence here at Bhaktivedanta Manor, we have developed an app. It's called MHK. You can download it free, folks. You can download it right now, MHK. And it's called Meditation Hare Krishna. And uh, presently, I think it has 100,000 downloads. Uh, it's moving up uh, on the uh, iPlayer as well. Um, but what it's all about is really how a new individual who may come to Krishna consciousness, they may have heard so much about yoga and meditation, but they can look at the app and morning and evening they can practice a variety of meditations and specifically leading them to Kirtan. Ultimately, my concept of outreach is how can we make Krishna consciousness available to people of all walks of life, of all ages. And that's specifically what we have tried to accomplish at Bhaktivedanta Manor. Beginning with young children, all the way to the elderly, how Krishna consciousness can be delivered to them, not just in their family lives, in their business lives, but equally within their social lives as well. One of the most important outreach initiatives that we have begun at Bhaktivedanta Manor is called Krishna Wisdom. It's an approach how to get the Western individual to come and get an experience of Krishna Consciousness. And we specifically targeted those that may be interested in a variety of ways. Every Monday, every Wednesday and every Saturday up to a hundred Western English individuals will come to the manor to understand something about Krishna Consciousness. And Krishna Wisdom has been a tremendous success. Many individuals have gone deeper into our philosophy. Monday will be a taste today where they'll try and see what's going on. And those that become interested will again come on Wednesday where we have a variety of courses. The first of the courses is called Explore. It's just exploring the concept, does God exist? And if it does, what's my connection to Him? So these individuals really begin to appreciate the value of it. And from there, we begin another course. It's called Gita Life, looking into the deeper aspects of the Gita, and so on. It will get further and further and further. Another aspect on the Mondays is that a short kirtan is held. So they get the concept of what is meditation and mantra meditation. And then on Saturdays, we'll have something called Festival of the Spirit, where over a couple of hundred individuals will come, families, to experience the spirituality at the manor, perhaps to experience a cooking course, a course on Ayurveda, and a course on well-being, and, and so on. So these things really attract a lot of Western people to come. So these three uh, aspects on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays are part of what's known as Krishna Wisdom and it's been immensely successful. Individuals from there have even gone on to the sabbatical here in Chopati so we can see how successful it can be in bringing an individual. The main aspect of Krishna Wisdom is that anyone who walks into your temple should not feel threatened. They should feel that this is my place. This is my place of worship or my home and I can walk around here and not be threatened regardless of the faith I'm coming from. In one survey that they did and they asked in America, what's the main reason you go to church? And only 10% of the people said they came for religious purposes. 90% said they came because of friendship. So I believe outreach is all about friendship. If we can befriend the individuals that walk into our temples, they will automatically adhere to our philosophy and take to our practices.
Srila Prabhupada very much wanted that his books are distributed because uh, this is the legacy of the society. So every day devotees from Bhaktivinoda Manor will go out to different towns in the locality, in fact across the country to distribute his books. Every year from Bhaktivinoda Manor, a hundred thousand books are distributed. And not just by the devotees who go and distribute on the streets, but equally our congregation who will go and visit people in their businesses, will knock on doors, will meet individuals at festivals, they'll distribute books. Uh, Srila Prabhupada very much wanted that his books are in practically every home in all the countries. In uh, uh, one of our devotees, when he was distributing books, his name is Suttapadas. In fact, he's written quite a few of the BBT books himself and compiled them together, one being Veda. Uh, at the end of the day, of distributing so many Bhagavad Gita's and you know they're distributing in temperatures of minus 10 very cold imagine being out on the street with people who don't really want to know anything about spirituality stopping them getting them to ask what's going on so Sutapa he had finished for the day distributing Gita's finally an elderly lady English lady came up to him and said that uh, what do you have in those baskets and Sutapa said it's the Gita and she said, oh, I want one. And he started conversing with this lady who had never been to our temple. Uh, she was a bit of a scholar and she said, you know, I've read one of your books. And she said, the book is uh, called Veda by someone called Sutapadas. Do you know who would that be? Now, can you imagine that out of 64 million people in the country, she meets the author of the book that she has read. Tremendous. This is Prabhupada's inspiration. When the devotees once were driving to a town, uh, and you know, when they're driving to a town after a heavy breakfast, often the person who's telling them to go to which town may fall asleep. So finally they went off to a wrong town in the south coast. So when the team leader woke up, again it was Suttabhadas, he said, where are we? What are we doing here? This town is too small, we'll have to go to a bigger town. So he went to get the van. Whilst he was getting the van, one of the devotees thought, well, at least let me distribute one book in this town while the van is coming. An English gentleman who was walking on the streets, he showed him a Bhagavad Gita. And the man immediately said, wow, I've been waiting for one of these books for so many years. And he took his shopping list out. And in this shopping list was sugar, butter, bread, and the other item was Bhagavad Gita. And today he found the Bhagavad Gita. And then when Sutapa arrived, he asked him, he said, have you read any of our books? He said, I'd received one of your books five years ago, and I've never met any devotees. And then he took his bag out and he showed him beads that he had made out of little balls. And then he showed them how he chants every day. He had never met any devotees just by reading that book. Imagine, he had been chanting for two years. And he'd been waiting to meet a devotee all of these years. This is phenomenal outreach when we can distribute the books in a variety of ways. Whichever way possible, let's try and distribute the books. Hare Krishna. Another aspect of outreach is Kirtan London. There are so many organizations now who have Kirtan Yoga throughout the world. And so many local individuals have become inspired to come and hear Kirtan Yoga. Although Iskon was first on the scene of Kirtan, somehow we were late in getting onto the Kirtan Yoga scene. So in London we've made an initiative, it's called Kirtan London. And within the locality of central London, a group of devotees regularly will have Kirtan. And many, many individuals will come and join in the kirtan. But it's done in a very meditative way. So it's in keeping with what they know of kirtan. Chanting Hare Krishna, the names of Lord Ram, uh, and so on. It has been so successful that from these Kirtan London programs, so many of those individuals that have come in contact with kirtan, they will then visit the different temples in the UK. And whilst visiting, they'll take a deeper appreciation and interest. The Kirtan London team 
also goes out to a variety of events, concerts, yoga shows, uh, exhibitions, and there they will have a short talk on meditation and yoga and a short performance of Kirtan. In this way, Kirtanya Sadahari, Uchitanya's name, uh, the Maha Mantra is being spread to every town and village. And of course, in one aspect of this Kirtan London is the meditation app, MHK, which we've put together, which works very well because then the experience of Kirtan, yoga, is available to them 24 hours when they're going to work, when they're coming back, when they finish work, at any time they can look at that and absorb themselves in the holy names of Lord Krishna. Another very important aspect of outreach is to go to every town and village and have a Hare Krishna festival. So the Hare Krishna festival team uh, will travel to most major towns and cities throughout the UK every year. And along with this, the Harinam party and the book distribution party will go ahead one week before so that there's great notice. They'll rent a local hall, a town hall. They'll call the local mayor or the local member of parliament to attend that festival. And all the local people in that area will be invited, either by an advert in the local paper, by, of course, the Harinam party distributing flyers, and the book distributors being in town for a week. And this has been immensely successful. All the local people within the uh, areas will come to an evening where there is kirtan, where there's a drama, where there's short talk on the principles of karma, reincarnation, vegetarianism. And they'll end with a large kirtan. And then, of course, there'll be a feast, a sumptuous feast, when they can connect with the local devotees there. We take all the names and addresses and emails of those who attend and then we'll connect them to a local group which is within the area, whether it's a Sangha group, a Bhakti Briksha group, a Namahata group. In this way, we stay connected with them to the next step of Krishna consciousness to introduce them to regular Sangha, whereby from there, they'll have the ability to take on Krishna consciousness themselves or they'll visit a local center and of course, the festival is not complete without Srila Prabhupada's books. There's a gift of a small book for everyone, or if they want to buy more, or paraphernalia, that's available as well. We encourage within the Hare Krishna festival that if you're looking for yoga and meditation, we have a wonderful app, the MHK. And of course, it can be downloaded from Google Play, and of course, from Apple iStore as well, and it's free. And what happens amazingly is when book distributors are distributing books and they say these books are about yoga and meditation and we have a free app and during the festivals we tell people we have a free app immediately people will take their phones out and they'll download the app immediately. And it only takes a few moments to download the MHK app. And in this way I think we've entered not just every town and village, not every home, but every phone, which is a great success for Srila Prabhupada and Krishna Consciousness. Other festivals that we all have are at the Manam, which are, are five festivals that we celebrate, beginning with Gora Purnima, going on, of course, from Gora Purnima to Ram Nomi, going on to uh, Janamashtami, Diwali, uh, and Ram Vijayutsava Dasera. And for all these festivals, lots of newcomers will arrive, and of course, all the regular congregation will come as well. Our biggest festival is Janamashtami, which is celebrated over two days, and over 70,000 people will come. That's quite amazing. It's a spiritual Disneyland. Uh, the different devotees uh, who've come have said that there is no such festival within ISKCON. They've never seen it. How the in-depth philosophy of Krishna consciousness is given to individuals along with an experience of Krishna Consciousness. Uh, the whole festival is spread over 80 acres of land with a variety of exhibitions, dramas, themes, Vrindavan gardens, darshans, japa gardens, food, prasadam. Uh, individuals who come, they come in the morning and they stay all the way till midnight because there's so much to do. Festivals, as Bhaktivinoda Thakur reminds us, Madhava Titi Janame, they're the mothers of devotion. Hence, people who are taking up Krishna Consciousness through
through our outreach program need to be nourished. And these festivals are an ideal way, not just to generate friends, funds, but to generate our future. To manage these festivals, we have volunteers at Bhaktivedanta Manor. We have 1,800 volunteers that serve at our festivals. Just for the two days of Janmashmi, it requires 1,800 devotees to organize that festival. And for one month nearly, to set up the marquees, to make all the food items, to get preparations together, 200 devotees will come for one month. They finish work at 6 o'clock, they'll come to the temple, they'll work all the way till 11 o'clock. They'll take a meal with us and they'll go back to work the next day. So like this, for, two, for nearly a month, nearly 200 devotees, volunteers are coming. These festivals also expand into our Sunday. Every Sunday is a festival at the manor. It requires 500 volunteers to manage our Sunday program. Just over 4,000 people will visit the manor and they'll get an experience uh, of welcome, of a tour, of a video, of prasadam, of philosophy, of youths, of debate. So many aspects are there. So that's another aspect of the Sunday program or the Sunday festival. One, another aspect of outreach is yoga, of course, and it's a very important aspect, especially as the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi ji, he made June the 21st International Yoga Day. And that was a tremendous inspiration for preaching for everyone throughout the world in Bhaktivedanta Manor. The BBC were making a documentary on yoga and they called it Yoga Bend It Like Britain. And a famous TV presenter, Naga Munjiti, who she's a TV presenter, a newscaster, very famous, everybody knows her, and they asked her to spend a day at different yoga studios. So the early morning she came to the manor. And there she sat for the morning program to look at our style of yoga, bhakti yoga, and that was included within the series. She interviewed our devotees who also teach yoga, and this show was a tremendous success. 10,000 people watched it on television, and we were in every home in this way. So this is outreach. How, we can, how can we get into every television screen? So this was a tremendous aspect of our outreach, and it's a great way to include yoga, because we can introduce bhakti yoga equally. Srila Prabhupada, when he came to London in 1969, uh, he had said that we will conquer the UK through drama because he very much remembers studying drama in his early days. Shakespeare, of course, had ruled England through drama. So, uh, in accordance with these instructions, many drama groups were started in the UK. Uh, the first of which was known as CHIT, C -I -T, which is Chaitanya's Instant Theatre. Uh, but over the last 30 years, uh, a very famous group at Bhaktivedanta Manor has been the Bhaktivedanta Players. And this year, they've been celebrating their 30th anniversary. To commemorate this, they had produced a two-hour Mahabharat, which then toured the country. And they'd sold out in about five different destinations throughout the UK, packed audiences. And can you imagine people that had never been to the temple who wanted to see Mahabharata, and Mahabharata, of course, as we know, had become very famous in India through the recent serial. So people really wanted to see the Mahabharata. So a lot of new people, a lot of regulars, a lot of devotees all attended these programs, or up to a thousand people were watching a two-hour production of the Mahabharata by the Bhaktivedanta players. And they're also touring the country for the 50th anniversary as well to give the flavor of how we can make Krishna consciousness available through drama. Another great initiative here. ISKCON have been facilitating and helping with what's known as the Avanti Schools Trust. We're advisors specifically on the spiritual curriculum, ISKCON in itself. The Avanti Trust was something that was started up by a group of devotees led by Naveen Krishnadas, uh, Nitish Gore, and the idea and the concept was that how can we make Krishna consciousness available 
uh, to those that want it from the Hindu perspective. Within the UK, there are 20,000 faith schools from all denominations, but there wasn't a single Hindu school. So in asking the government, uh, they had lobbied and they initially started one school. The Avanti Trust now has five schools in the UK, throughout different parts of the UK, which is over about uh, 5,000 students capacity that they have. And the uh, curriculum within these schools is uh, the local curriculum that exists, but then there's a spiritual curriculum. So what's the spiritual curriculum that they have? Every morning there's collective worship where individuals will come for arti and kirtan. Every day there is the teaching of yoga within the schools. The schools teach different languages as well. So apart from English, which is the n national language, Spanish is another language, but Sanskrit is also taught in these schools as well. So everybody learns Sanskrit from a very early age. And the basis of learning the Sanskrit is through the verses of the Bhagavad Gita. So that's quite tremendous in itself. Uh, every day there's a vegetarian meal, which is prasadam, which is being served in all the schools. Uh, all our festivals that we celebrate, the schools will celebrate equally these festivals within themselves. So there's a great interest. Those that are uh, uh, sending their children, they're realizing that when the children come home, they're chanting Hare Krishna. They know the philosophy. Uh, and from that, all the parents equally now want and have a great keen interest in Krishna consciousness. So they're also coming to see what the Krishna conscious philosophy is. What's being taught within all the school is non-sectarian. It is the principles from the Hindu tradition equally. So it's all encompassing. And equally we are teaching them uh, about all the other faiths and their importance and relevance and their values as well. So a wholesome education is given. Uh, recently a survey showed that the Avanti Trust children were in the top 20% of students within the UK. So not only academic excellence is being taught, cultural ex uh, excellence, but spiritual excellence. And that's the motto of the Avanti Trust. Academic, cultural, and spiritual excellence. The, uh, the Avanti schools were very fortunate because the uh, first school, uh, which was the first state-funded Hindu school in the UK, which is a beautiful marble temple, was officially visited and opened by Her Majesty the Queen, who'd come on a visit for a silver diamond jubilee. And there the school presented her with a tapestry or a painting of Lord Chaitanya in the Jarakunda forest. And when the Queen had asked uh, myself about the values which were being taught in the school, I explained that the values are about Chaitanya who taught that each one of us we should respect others within our lives. We should be humble, we should be tolerant, and in this way society will have no difficulties. And she replied, what a wonderful philosophy. And she said, I will take this tapestry and this tapestry will remain in Buckingham Palace. So there it stands. Lord Chaitanya has finally entered Buckingham Palace through the Jara Kanda forest. Equally, the Avanti school children were invited by the Prime Minister to 10 Downing Street for the Diwali function where they sung uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya and they sang the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And the Prime Minister was overwhelmed and said that these are the British Hindu schools which are phenomenal. Hare Krishna. A very important aspect of, of our outreach, um, of our nourishing others, is, is the youth aspect. And specifically for the youth, we have three aspects within our congregation. The first is known as Krishna Club, looking at children all the way from 6 to 14 year olds. And Krishna Club has been going now for about 25 years. And specifically, it's for children who want to come on a Sunday like a Sunday school and learn about the culture and values of our tradition. And the motto of Krishna Club is very, very interesting. Teach Krishna, preach Krishna, reach Krishna. Three aspects within the Krishna Club. And it's oversubscribed with over 200 children who come morning and afternoon on a Sunday with over 200 people on the waiting list. 
moving on from Krishna Club, the next aspect of the outreach specifically for the youth is the Pandavasena. And they nourish those from 14 to 21 year olds. And they have a whole variety of programs that they have. They, ov they have over 8,000 youths on their database. They have regular gatherings in three parts of London every Friday called jammings, which over 200 people will attend. They have regular retreats within the UK, within Europe, where over 200 youths will go and participate. And regularly, they're at every university. And now, I believe, they're at 26 university in what's known as the KC SOC, Krishna Consciousness Society. So imagine that, over 26 universities, which actually uh, have societies where university students can come and learn about Krishna Consciousness. Hare Krishna. Another aspect within the manner and part of outreach really is simple living and high thinking. Prabhupada very much used that term when he was at the manor. When he first arrived at the manor uh, in, in the 1960s, uh, we had one cow at that time. And he really wanted many more cows at the manor. And he had said that if the cows are happy, then everything will be peaceful. So we realized that this is a good instruction for all of us to make sure that the cows are always happy then the temple will be peaceful and that's the same theme here at Govardhanika village that the cows be happy then everything automatically will be peaceful so from that one cow now we have over 60 cows uh, at Bhaktan Tamana which give over a hundred liters of milk and it's also a visitor center because uh, we built uh, one of the largest buildings for cows within the world uh, it's called New Gokul and to open it, the uh, Attorney General of the country, Dominic Greaves, who's the QC there for the government, had come to open the actual centre with Bhakti Chiruswami. And when they opened it, the Times of London had come to look at the actual Goshal, and it had cost nearly over two million pounds to build it. We'd used sustainable aspects because this was all simple living and high thinking. So it was eco-friendly. So when uh, the Times of London saw the Goshala and the cows and the wonderful and fantastic facilities they had, there's even a cow hospital within it. The Times had a headlines on there, the Hilton for the cows opens. Meaning that there's a Hilton Hotel, which is the five-star hotel. So now there's a five-star home for the cows here at Bhakti Ananta Manor. And we said, yes, this is our philosophy, that the cows is our mother and she's looked after in the best of places, and hence it is the Hilton. Uh, we find that so many individuals will not visit the temple, but they'll want to see the farm. They'll want to see the dairy that we have, which is producing ghee, paneer, uh, butter, so many aspects of it. And equally, they want to see the cows being milked. They want to come and feed the cows. They want to experience the envi environmentally friendly aspect of it. Uh, people are looking nowadays for this simple living and high thinking. But instead, everyone has high living and no one's thinking anymore. So let's adjust that again by showing this very simple principle. And again, people are looking for that peace of mind. Everyone is looking to be happy. Everyone wants peace of mind. But you know what? Unless there is inner peace, how can there be world peace? How can there be happiness? So this inner peace, this inner happiness comes through the process of Krishna consciousness and this project of the Goshala introduces them to this aspect. The bulls are also used on a daily basis to uh, ferry uh, all the aspects within, uh, whether it's uh, the rubbish and the boxes, whether it's bullock cart rides. So again, it shows the utility of the bulls. The cows give milk, but equally the bulls are so useful. And we use them also for tilling the land, for working the fields. And another very important aspect within here is known as ISKCON Educational Services. Every year at Bhaktivedanta Manor, 29,000 school children visit Bhaktivedanta Manor. And they spend a whole day. These are all general English children from all across the country. And they'll come for an experience of Hinduism. They'll have a day. Uh, understanding the philosophy, 
they'll have an idea of what the cows are like. Many of them will become vegetarians when they see the cows. They'll have a day dressing up in saris, in dhotis. Uh, they'll see a drama. They'll all have prashadam, a feast before they leave, and they leave in the late afternoon. So it's a whole day spent in understanding the Hindu ethos and experience of the culture and tradition of Hinduism. So imagine that, 29,000 school children have been coming for nearly about 25 years. So those individuals who grow up will become quite uh, uh, prominent within society, will have, be, will have come to the manor. And when we meet many individuals locally, they'll say, my son or my daughter has been to your place, and it is so amazing, I want to come and visit it. Hare Krishna. A very important aspect of Bhakti Vintamana is our College of Vedic Studies, CVS, because we want to systematically educate individuals who come to Krishna consciousness. And they have devised so many courses so that it has a roadmap for the individual. An individual, through the outreach programs, will have an interest in Krishna consciousness. What happens to them next? When they visit the temple, they become more interested in what's going on. And now to educate them is a very important aspect. So the College of Vedic Studies has a variety of courses to take that individual. As I said already, beginning with what's known as four sessions on what's known as Explore. Understanding principles of whether there's a God or not, a variety of other things. Moving from there, we have something called Gita Life. It's a systematic study of the Gita in acronyms, looking at a variety of things. After that, they're introduced to a systematic study, if they wish, of all our other books, and that's the Bhakti Shastri. And after that, if they are still looking at other aspects of study, we have a study of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And then, after many years, we have the final study, which is known as the Bhakti Vai Bhava, looking at the Bhagavatam in detail. On Sundays over... 350 people come for education and these are all professionals all young people who want to understand and I think it's really all about making these courses dynamic and relevant for those individuals addressing their needs their concerns will make sure that those individuals keep coming back and they give referrals so I think education is the way forward Hare Krishna the uh, sacred pillars within ISKCON are book distribution, Harinam and Prashadam distribution. These are the sacred pillars that exist. So all three are going on regularly within Bhaktivedanta Manor. Harinams are something which are very, very prominent. The uh, Bhakti program will go out regularly on Harinams during the weekdays. And every Saturday we have two Harinams. One is at midday visiting local towns in all the vicinities where the devotees have never been. And the most famous of all the Harinams is over 200 devotees that gather every Sunday in central London to chant the holy names of Lord Krishna for two hours of chanting throughout the streets of London. And so many people will join in. So many people will be interested. So many people may make fun, but they'll be chanting the holy name of Krishna. So Harinam is a great initiative and for the 50th anniversary, of course, they are going to visit 50 new towns where the Harinam has not visited. So this is the glory of spreading the holy name through Harinam. Srila Prabhupada, when he came to Bhaktivedanta Manor, he had said something amazing. He had said, the manor is wonderful. And when the sun shines, there is no place better. So that's amazing. And through these instructions, it, in, it told us how we should invite people to Bhaktivedanta Manor, making sure that they feel that this is their home, this is their place of worship. Through the variety of activities, whatever it is that anyone is doing, it is linked to outreach. Whether it's someone who's coming for a visit, whether it's someone that's just coming to deliver the mail, we know that through our behavior, through our relevance that we put that individual, through our care, that person will become very, very attracted to Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is available to everyone from all walks of life, from all religions, all castes, all creeds. It's just simply a question of us 
making it tailor-made for the specific country or the specific community and making it all-encompassing so that everyone will become happy within the family of Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna.